Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to what we're terming the Risk Academy. Uh, we'll be doing these series of videos to help you understand risk management program. Uh, my name is Sean Smith. I am the Senior Security and Compliance Engineer for Geriatric Practice Management. Uh, we're a software company that focuses on the long-term post-acute care. Uh, we totally understand uh, you know, the nature of long-term post-acute care, the fact that you know, practitioners are the definition of mobile medical uh, professionals, and be able to sort of help you in this space. Uh, I hold a couple of cybersecurity certifications. Uh, one is I'm a certified information security manager, and I also am a certified information system security professional. Uh, both of these are from different organizations, and one is more of the management track, and one is more of the technical track. I actually have been doing uh, and dealing with IT and cybersecurity for more than 30 years. Uh, I was actually a cryptologist in the United States Navy, uh, rode submarines back in the 80s, so I have been doing secret stuff for a long, long time. So why are we doing this series, and why will it matter to you? One of the things that I have learned and just especially talking with our clients and talking with others in the long-term post-acute care market is they really don't understand uh, sort of how to, to get started. You know, everybody's under the mandate from CMS for HIPAA. HIPAA, HIPAA, HIPAA. You know, I jokingly say HIPAA now is in college and getting ready to graduate because it's from 1996. But we've had a mandate to do HIPAA risk assessments since 1996 from that original law. Uh, and then they've added pieces over the years. But no one understands how do I actually do it? How do I get started? So what I decided to do is we have sort of built this Risk Academy. Uh, it'll be a series of 10 videos uh, that'll come out every couple weeks. So you'll be able to sort of get a first fill and then a little bit more and then a little bit more so you can ingest these. Uh, and then sort of be able to start applying things to your own organization. I wanted to try and help educate a little bit so that you at least had an idea of how to start and sort of where to go from there. Uh, this first video, or we're calling the first chapter, we actually are calling the videos chapters, the first chapter in the Risk Academy here, uh, we're going to talk about what a risk program actually is and the definition of a risk management program. Uh, and then sort of, you know, first questions ask, what is a risk? How do I actually identify what a risk is? We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then how risk sort of fits in from your, your corporate standpoint all the way down to your end point for your IT stuff and kind of give you an idea of strategic versus tactical risk. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we want to talk about when we with risk management program. There's a term called enterprise risk management or you commonly see it written as ERM. What we need to do is define what that actually is. You hear lots of terms, risk program, risk process, risk analysis, risk treatment, risk mitigation. We're going to get into all those things, but before we even get to that point, we need to kind of define what it is, what we're talking about. So there are several key goals here of the enterprise risk management that we need to obtain. The first one that we're doing is this program will manage your risk to an acceptable level. Or if any of you have ever worked with a financial advisor, they talk about your risk tolerance. It's the same way with enterprise risk management. What is the risk tolerance of your organization? Some of you may be quite comfortable with a higher risk level on some items than others. That acceptable level is independent to each organization. What's acceptable for my organization is not acceptable for a hundred doc organization. They're all different. The second thing we have to do with this enterprise risk management program, the purpose of it is to identify potential risks and their impacts. That's actually the, the heart and soul of finding your risk. This is how you do it. We want to identify them. So you've got to be able to find the things, whether it's a cyber hacker or whether it's one of your own internal employees because you don't have policies correct enough. Or maybe when you're hiring practices, you need to check to see whether that person has a Medicare fraud background and is never allowed to work with Medicare again. You know, those type of things. That they, uh, Again, we're trying to identify our risks and our impacts, especially our impacts to our business. The next piece, 
once you've identified them, it will help you prioritize them for treatment or prioritize your risk treatment. Treatment is actually how we fix them, so to speak. We'll talk about that in depth in another chapter. But we need to prioritize that risk treatment. Obviously, the more uh, impactful things we want to take care of first. And this last piece will also help us to deploy controls. That is a term that we use in cybersecurity. Uh, a control is anything physical, administrative, or technical. So a physical thing could be like maybe a lock on a door. Uh, administrative thing, like maybe your onboarding policy for your users or your, or your exit policy for your users when someone leaves, has things, you know, it's a written policy. It's something that's written down. Um, and then the technical things like, oh, firewalls and multi-factor authentication systems and things like that. Those are controls. Typically, it's something that you invest time or money in. Uh, to manage and treat the risks. You have to apply controls to your risks to be able to bring that risk level down. We're always trying to bring our risk level down. Okay. So what is the real business impact of this? There's a couple things that we're trying to do that this will help us do business-wise. And the first one is It's going to help us find an opportunity for gain. Maybe there's something that we realize we can use as a competitive advantage. If, for example, you have something security-wise that another group doesn't, if you're both looking at being contracted at a facility, maybe you have an advantage that someone else doesn't. Uh, and the other piece that we're trying to do We're trying to minimize our vulnerabilities. Again, we're trying to do this to make sure that we're doing things better. We're handling and managing our risks so that we minimize how vulnerable we are to attack by someone from the outsider. Maybe it's an insider threat. Uh, you know, maybe it's things like making sure people know and validate where they're sending faxes so you don't send a copy of that medical record to Joe's Auto Body Shop, for example. So this is what we're trying to do with the actual Enterprise Risk Management Program. So now we've talked about the Enterprise Risk Management Program, ERM, and we sort of talked about what it's supposed to do for your organization. The very first question I get from anyone is, how do I define a risk? What's a risk? So what we're going to do, there are two definitions for, inter for risk um, that come from the different areas. So you've got more of a technical one and you've got more of a management level one. And so I'm going to describe both of them and I'll explain there are times where you use each of these. So the first one is the, is the more technical one. This one comes from CISSP background, the more technical background. A risk equals a threat times the vulnerability. So you typically see this done more in systems when you're talking about something, uh, especially around vulnerabilities. What's the vulnerability in that system? And then what's the threat to that vulnerability? So for example, if you've got a firewall that doesn't have any of the patches put on it, and your threats are consistently coming from the internet, because that firewall's on the internet, that's sort of a way to, for you to identify that that's a risk and, and be able to say, well, that's a high, medium, or low. Or you can actually, if you can, quantify it and turn it into dollars to make decisions on. This other piece of risk here, this comes from uh, information security management. And I like this definition better, especially when you're setting up a risk program, because it makes more sense business-wise. It's the impact of something happening times the likelihood that it'll actually happen. So if you think about all of your, we'll pick your practice management system, your billing system. The impact of someone getting unauthorized access to that, if they steal all the data, is very big, a huge impact to your organization. But what's the likelihood that it'll actually happen? 
you know, if you keep it in very secure and you put these things called, we'll talk about called defense in depth, layers of protection around it, maybe the likelihood is very low. So even though it's a high impact but a low likelihood, your risk level is low. If this is really a way of looking at, uh, from the business standpoint, the impact to your business ties how, how likely is it actually going to happen. And I sort of use this, you know, in Florida, the likelihood of hurricanes is very high. The likelihood of tornadoes, however, is much, much, much less. And earthquakes is almost nil. So if you're worried about an earthquake hitting the data center where all your stuff is at in Florida, the earthquake's probably very, very, very low, even though it have a high impact, has almost no likelihood of happening. So that's going to actually be a low risk. Whereas if you're looking at it from the impact being high and hurricane hitting it, that's a much higher impact. Okay? So you can help adjust risk that way. But, but risk, if you start thinking about it in terms of how does it impact my business and then how likely is it to actually happen? You know, getting hit by an asteroid technically can happen, but the likelihood of it is very, very, very small. So you kind of have to, it's a juggling act to figure out, well, it's a really high impact, but a very bad likelihood. Here's just another, a quick one that happens all the time. You've got a laptop because your mobile medical professionals, long-term post-care physicians, and the uh, clinicians are absolutely the mobile medical professionals. They go from place to place, and they go meet patients where they're at. They don't make the patients come to them. So you're carrying around the device all the time. Well, how likely is that device to be stolen? That's actually, a, you know, you see a lot of theft happen or theft or damage or loss. You forget it someplace. Um, the likelihood of that happening is pretty high. But now what's the impact if that happens? So if you have, say, well, if a laptop gets stolen from one of our clinicians, what's the likelihood of that? Well, it's kind of a, it can happen. But what's the impact? Well, there's no protection on that laptop. That's a very big impact. Uh, but if you've got it encrypted, so that it's encrypted, and if someone steals it, okay, it's encrypted, we report it's encrypted, and life goes on, we just get a new laptop, we're covered. So the impact of that is low. So those, it's a juggling act here to figure this out, but that's how you can find out your risk. You, you identify your assets, we're going to talk about that, a complete chapter about identifying your assets, then figuring out what ha the impact and likelihood of something happening to them. So the last thing I want to talk to you about in this chapter is sort of the difference between strategic risk and or, or tactical risks. Uh, and we sort of have it built into three categories here. If you think of it like a triangle uh, or a level here, you have organizational risk. These are long-term strategic things. Uh, you know, for example, if your organization, uh, you know, working with a new startup, you know, are you capitalized well enough? It, this is long-term board of directors strategic thinking, okay? Then you sort of have this middle tier, which is the mission or business risk. This is more day-to-day -day mission, mission oriented. Some of this might be more strategic. Uh, you could think of this as more six to 12 month things. This, the organization stuff's more 12, 24, 36 month type things. So uh, for example, a, a mission Risk might be that you're not doing falls assessment on all of your patients that would uh, have an opportunity to fall. And maybe you need to make that a part of your business process so that you are doing those falls risk assessment on those patients to make sure that you've sort of protected yourself. Uh, and sort of the tactical pieces, you know, your information systems, your IT risks, these are where these things fall into. It's something like, boom, i got to fix it and got to handle it right now. It's not something you plan for for two years because that changes so much. IT changes so much. It's more tactical in nature. Oh, this happened, we fix it. This happens, we fix it. We find this risk, we fix it. We find this risk, we fix it. So you really kind of have to think of this as long, you know, kind of maybe putting them levels or maybe identifying that that's more strategic risk. This is a more business focused risk. This is a more IT focused risk. Um, but you sort of need to you know, figure out these risks and sort of put them in terms of strategic long term risk or tactical risks that will help you prioritize when things happen and how they happen.
want to thank everybody for attending um, and getting some information. We sort of talked about why we're doing this and a little bit about what enterprise risk management is, what a risk is, and you know some of the definitions around what's a strategic and tactical risk. We'll get much more in depth as the chapters go along. Uh, the next chapter, if you would like to come back and visit, we're going to talk about the governance and how we actually put this in from the top down, because this won't work if you don't put it in from the top down. So I look forward to seeing you and very much would love to see the feedback. Thank you very much.